dev meets. It's Thank you there. Uh, welcome everyone to the January uh, Dev Meets. I'm so excited to have you all here today. Um, we have a really fun lineup for you guys. We're going to have uh, hopefully a company spotlight and we're going to have an alumni spotlight. Um, we're going to go over uh, kind of what to expect today and then we'll kind of jump into stuff. So first off, uh, we are recording this event. So for those of you who uh, want to rewatch this or wasn't able to attend, you can go ahead and watch it after. It'll be on the website. Please keep your microphones muted. And if you can keep your cameras off just so we can make sure that Zoom runs as fluid as we can. Um, and then if you have any questions throughout the presentation, there is a chat function. Do not hesitate to ask questions throughout this. We are going to have a Q&A at the end of each presentation so we can go over all the questions that you guys have. So first starting off, I am Christina. I'm part of the career services team here at Bottega University. Um, I am excited because we have an alumni here today that we're going to be introducing to you guys. His name is uh, Dan, sorry, Danny Carmen. He is a former architect, now software engineer. Um, he is over at Rain Focus, and he's going to talk to you guys a little bit about his journey, um, you know, how he got to where he is, and what he's currently doing right now in the field. Um, so, without further ado, Danny, the floor is all yours. Awesome. Oh, my camera can start. There we go. I'm going to share my screen real quick. OK, yeah, so as Christina mentioned, I used to be an architect. Um, it's been kind of a weird, it's been a weird year, honestly. Um, I thought I'd go through a little bit of my background first before uh, jumping into my path to development through Bottega. Um, I uh, did my bachelor's and master's at the University of Utah in architecture. Um, and then after that, you have to actually become a licensed architect. Um, you have to do about two years worth of internship hours um, in various aspects of the field. And you have to take six really long tests. Um, so there was a lot that went into architecture, so it was kind of a hard thing to step away from um, at times, but I, I feel like I've made the right decision. Um, while I was going through uh, that two years of internships and uh, so those six tests, which took about a year to go through those anyway, <clears throat> um, I was working on some side projects. Um, I was building an app. Um, I built a plugin for my architectural software. Um, so I was doing kind of these coding and programming projects on the side. Um, I, you know, to the point that I didn't have a ton of free time. So I would ride the bus to work so that I could um, code on the bus. Um, that was about the, uh, some of the only free time that I had. Um, and then a little bit at night and in the mornings. Um, the, what you see on the screen are a few of the projects that I worked on. So it was a pretty varied um, thing. It was apartments and um, event centers and cafeterias. Uh, I really enjoyed architecture. Um, I was working as a project manager at the time when I left. Um, and I was also working on uh, standards for the company, you know, drawing standards and um, modeling standards within our architectural software. Um, I think the things that drew me to architecture, uh, there were a lot of creative problem solving. It was very design based, um, a lot of working within constraints and um, working with a lot of factors at play, um, kind of complicated uh, issues to, to resolve. Uh, <clears throat> last January, I had a coworker leave abruptly um, and I got shifted to, all of his work got shifted over to me and I, a lot of the parts that I didn't enjoy so much about architecture came into a lot sharper focus. Um, that went on for several months. And uh, even though all the stresses that I had been dealing with over those months uh, were things that I had done before, something just felt really wrong this time. And uh, I wasn't quite sure what. So I just kind of, I needed some way to resolve this unsettled feeling in my life. Um, and it came, I'd probably say it was about May, maybe early, late April, that uh, it, we felt like, uh, my wife and I felt like it was time that we needed to make a change um, and to shift into um, software development. 
Um, I talked with friends who were both developers and friends who were architects, tried to kind of get both sides of the conversation, and we ended up deciding that that was what we we're going to do. Um, so I started looking at boot camps um, and you know trying to weigh the different options. Um, and it came to be that I was, uh, I felt like Batega was the one to go with. I um, felt like they had a really good cur curriculum and um, one that applied to most of the job applications or a lot of the job applications that I was looking at. Um, I ended up doing the part-time course through Bottega. Um, I had a baby that was due in August and um, it was going to be late June that I was able to start working or start on the boot camp. So um, having a new baby in the middle of a boot camp did not sound like a fun thing um, instead in, in the full time course. So um, I went with the part time course so it could be a little bit more uh, self directed and I could have a little bit more time flexibility there. Um, that worked really well. Um, I officially graduated in November, um, but I finished up the coursework in October and started looking for jobs at that point. Um, I applied a ton of places. I was sending out about 20 applications a week. Um, once I started getting interviews, um, I the applying slowed down a lot, and I was more researching and preparing for those interviews. Um, that took a lot more time than I initially thought it was going to. Um, and then a little bit after I finished up my coursework, I uh, got the initial interview with the company that I'm with now, Rain Focus. <clears throat> Um, that initial interview was just kind of a cultural check-in, kind of see how this person would fit personality-wise. Um, and that was really good. I got to ask some good questions from the research that I had done. Um, after that, about a week later, I got a take-home assignment from them. Um, and, you know, just a little bit of basically things that I had been taught in the boot camp, um, just needed to show that I could um, apply those and, uh, you know, think independently. Um, and then after that, I got a technical interview with them about a week after I turned in the take home assignment. Um, I really liked how they did the technical interview at RainFocus. Um, rather than kind of asking you esoteric coding questions, um, they took the functionality from my coding assignment, from the take home assignment, um, and had me or watched me add functionality to it that they had requested. Um, I really like that um, because I feel like I was, you know, could try different things. I could talk with them um, rather than, you know, just like, oh, what is, you know, what are the different variable types or things like that? Um, I feel like the more hands on thing was a, a benefit for both me and, and hopefully for them as well. Um, they had me kind of talk through as I was uh, coding everything, and then um, it seemed to go pretty well. I was able to accomplish the things they asked me, and then the next day they called the called me with an offer. Um, so then I started with Rain Focus in November as a, a junior software developer. Um, what Rain Focus does is a event software company. Um, so. A lot of the huge tech companies that you've heard of, you know, Oracle, Adobe, IBM, um, they use RainFocus software for their own internal events. Um, and it helps to automate just all the little things that you need to do in events. Um, events are full of these little tiny tasks that you just need to get information from someone or you need to um, you know, have a place for them to place their, uh, their descriptions or um, their logos or um, organization pictures or information. Um, so Rain Focus is um, a great job of uh, using their product to organize all that information and help these companies to put on these really awesome events. Um, and we do uh, one or two events ourselves. Um, there's one coming up called Insight um, just towards the end of the month. Um, the They did a really good job of onboarding me to the application itself. Um, it has a really massive code base and just finding my way around it was really difficult um, and kind of getting used to the new process. I was used to, you know, I had worked in an office for about six years up to that point. So I was familiar with kind of the, you know, general office processes. I feel like those are about the same from business to business, regardless of what field you're in. Um, but the kind of the uh, programming and development processes um, were a little bit more to get used to since I had just done everything on my own at that point. 
Uh, the company structured kind of interesting. And rather than a back end and front end, um, they have like UI developers that are doing all the HTML and CSS, and then uh, the back end doing like the or I don't, I don't know what they would call it, not back end, but uh, the other group is doing the JavaScript and Java is their back end. <clears throat> so I had to uh, pick up some Java. I learned a little bit of it when I was doing my um, app, but that was back in 2017. So I've had to remember a lot and uh, um, kind of pick it back up as I go. Um, and overall, I've been very happy with um, this decision that I've made to shift into development. Uh, I was pretty far into the architecture world and it was a hard thing to step away from. But I think if anyone gets anything out of this, I'd say, you know, if you're in a situation that you're not a huge fan of, you don't have to stay in there no matter how much you put into it. Um, that's, you know, kind of a sunk cost if you think of it in like economic terms and uh, do the thing that's gonna make you happy. Um, I'm feeling a lot less stressed now and just, uh, I really enjoy the work that I'm doing. Um, I enjoyed lots of aspects of architecture, but there were a lot of things that I didn't like. Uh, I'd say I enjoy a much greater percentage of what I'm doing now. Sorry, Christina, you gave me like 15 minutes, but uh, I'm not good at talking about myself. No, you're totally fine. Um, and you said that you, you right now you're in an internship. Can you talk a little bit about what the day-to-day -day is like for that? Uh, it's not an internship. It's a, it's a full-time position. Um, Day to day, you know, we have our stand up meeting um, and we kind of say, hey, I'm working on this issue. If you finish it on up, you pick a new one from the scrum board and then you uh, you just work on that. Um, I I interact with people as I, I need to, but other than that, it's pretty independent, which works for me. Nice. And how big is your team and do you have like a mentor? How, how does all that stuff work with your team? Yeah, we've got a manager who's kind of my mentor. And then um, my team, we've got three developers, a QA person, uh, one of those UI developers that I described, um, and they're shared between teams. We don't have a uh, one-to-one -one ratio of the, uh, um, you know, the business logic developers versus the UI developers. And uh, then we've got our designer as well, and he's shared between teams as well. Nice, nice. I know with every team, that's a different structure. So it's always kind of interesting to see um, just kind of the environment that you find yourself in. That's awesome. And then you said currently, so you're in a full time position. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, what you're building, what you're using to build it? What parts of the school uh, languages that we taught that you're using and things kind of like what happened post graduation that got you into that position and the languages that you're developing? Yeah. Um, so what we're building, you know, we've got the the rain focus application and, you know, IBM, Adobe, these huge companies are using it um, for these huge events. Um, but rain focus wanted to shift into kind of a smaller, maybe not small, but like mid-size events for mid-size companies. And so what I'm working on is kind of a simplified version of what we're doing where people can uh, just roll out an event really quickly um, rather than having to put in a ton of time to it um, to make sure that everything um, is working well. It's kind of like a, you know, a light application of it. So we're working on that. It, it exists right now, but it's only being used by a few of our clients. Excuse me. And uh, so for that, we're using React um, and JavaScript. Um, you know, got that straight from Bottega. And then also uh, Java is our back end that we're doing. Um, so I had to kind of pick that up. But really, once you've got one programming language and you understand the logic, uh, at that point, it's mostly just syntax. Nice. With Java, are you learning on the job? Did you get a course? Or how did you uh, actually start to do that? Um, I, like I said, I learned Java when I built my, uh, well, I learned some of Java when I uh, built my Android application way back when. So I had the basics down there. Um, and really, I'd say with Java, the, the biggest part is understanding the structure that the company um, has put together um, for everything. They've got a you know, beautifully put together um, way of doing things, but it's understanding that way um, that sometimes takes a little bit of doing. Nice, nice. And it is nice when you've got a company that uh, understands documentation, understands how to put in uh, what is considered their company preferences. Um, sometimes you get that and sometimes you don't, but it's it's always nice when you've got a company that understands the importance of documentation. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Awesome, awesome. Well, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat function. Um, there it is over there on the side. Um, in the meantime, um, I did want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that I saw when you were going through the program, when you and I have inter uh, encountered each other. I think one of the biggest things that has impressed me uh, with you is your attention to detail, but also your like forethought. And I think that has a lot to do with your background in architecture, being able to think through not just the here and now, but kind of a, a project from start to finish and what is the best way to do it. Um, but I think you've also done that a lot in your career as well. When you started doing career building, I think even when you were in the program, you weren't just thinking about, let's get it done. You were thinking about, okay, post-graduation, let's get projects, let's get my portfolio, let's get my resume, very pro proactive. And I think that's one of those, um, one of those qualities that I've really admired in you. And one of the th reasons why I wanted you to come in and kind of talk to everyone because we all have different strengths. And I think for you, it's very much a, your background of architect, other professions have really molded you into who you are today. Um, and I just kind of really admire that about you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I'd say it was more like desperation. I want to <laughs> need to get a job quick. So uh, again, those projects and everything, I should have uh, gone through here, here are the, uh, um, projects. I didn't do any of my slideshow. I apologize. Yeah, here are the projects that were on my portfolio. Um, a lot of you probably recognize that bottom left one um, as one of the uh, Bottega projects. Um, so yeah, I, I only had four projects in my portfolio, but I wanted to get um, enough in there to show people that I could, you know, perform the work. Yeah. What did you end up doing for your capstone? Re refresh my memory on that. Um, yeah, that's this upper left one right here. Um, and that is a recipe site, kind of based, uh, you know, modeled UI wise off of Pinterest. Um, but yeah, you can upload your own recipes. We really like food in our family, so that seemed like a good fit. Awesome, that's awesome. How'd you come up with the idea for it? Um, hmm, that's a good question. I think I just had to come up with something and uh, I've actually wanted to do some sort of recipe site for a long time. Um, a lot of them, just don't quite meet the needs that I have for it. Um, and I don't know if I'd say that the one that I built meets all of my needs I either, but it got close. Yeah, but it's always good to build something out yourself because it kind of makes you think through things a little bit more, not just for that project, but for every project that you do after. So definitely yeah. a really good one for a capstone. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. All right, I've got one question here. Um, so it said, how long was your internship? Two years? How was it? Did you end up doing a, an internship or just go straight into the full-time uh, position? No, I just went straight into the full-time position. Nice. Yes. Okay. So that's actually a good point as well when it comes to internships. So sometimes you will enter into a, a position that's an internship um, and it could be a year, it could be six months. And sometimes like with Danny, it's a full-time position. It just depends on the company, the needs and things like that. But that's a really good question. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, we are now going to turn the time over to our company spotlight. Um, we are going to hear from a company called Capital Platform and it is a capital relationship platform. Um, we have with us Thomas Smith, who is the Director of uh, Product Development. Um, and then we might also hear from Corey Engel, who is the founder, but for now I'm gonna turn the time over to Thomas where he's going to introduce awesome. the company, the culture and all that good stuff. Awesome, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Christina, and thanks everyone for, for hopping on today. So, uh, I don't know if you guys are able to use the emojis or anything, but I'll do a quick survey. How many of you, by a show of hand or clap, have ever used PayPal? I'll go ahead and do mine, because I have. Looks like Christina has, Danny has. We're seeing a lot now, awesome. Yeah, so PayPal is a really, really well-known product. Um, and when we think about PayPal um, as what is the value of PayPal? PayPal allows us to be able to move um, resources, money, or capital from A to B. And sometimes we're able to even gather together and have a group be uh, gathering together funds towards one particular area. And so right now across the industry, there's really two big metrics right now. Uh, one relates to venture capital and the other relates to the growth of SaaS startups and funding going towards software as a service. Um, the first being uh, there, there's over uh, $3 trillion that gets allocated 
through through ventures, uh, that is a record high. And uh, according to Gartner, there's going to be 172 billion dollars invested specifically into software as a service. Uh, and and financial technology software is one area that uh, has made news for really really good reasons, and people are really excited about it. And so at Capta, we are building a SaaS product that helps to solve a lot of different uh, problems that we see in venture capital funding, specifically for pre-seed companies all the way up to um, about the Series A, Series B life cycle of businesses. One of the things that we are really envisioning is uh, recruiting and, and, and being able to empower people who have ideas of their own. So. Um, personally for me, I have other, other ventures, uh, my business partner has uh, ventures as well. And so we want to be able to recruit and enable developers who enjoy building software, but then also have a personal piece of software that they're looking to, uh, fund and looking to get uh, different types of capital, um, invested into their idea so that they can see their idea go to market. Um, in terms of timing, so really right now, Capital has been run um, with the service um, models. So we help companies accelerate their digital footprint. We help provide them with integrations between systems as well as advisory, sort of acting as an interim CTO role. And we are looking to transition that into a formal software product where people can come onto our platform, uh, transact, and be able to ultimately get funds like PayPal from A to B uh, faster and at a fraction of the cost. Uh, in terms of how long Captel has been around and where we're going, so Captel has been run for uh, over two and a half years as a service-based uh, business. And over the next 12 months, we're really looking to uh, digitize uh, what we are doing. Um, in terms of the stack that we are uh, looking to use, uh, we are starting with a web-based platform. So um, React with a backend of Django and then having APIs which are uh, governed and powered through uh, AWS. So using API gateway, using Lambda functions, and ultimately hosting code on uh, unstable EC2 instances. So uh, that's more about the company, where we're at, some of the tech stack tools that we're using. Um, and I guess the second question is a little bit more about me. So how did this come about and why, um, why did I kind of transition into this? So uh, kind of as a, as a founder for the product, I come from a uh, SaaS background. So some of the um, different tools that I've been able to use uh, have been Palantir, Tableau, Power BI, uh, and then other infrastructure, infrastructure and um, cloud platforms that I've developed in include GCP specifically in analytics and, and predictive uh, machine learning, um, as well as Terraform for infrastructure as code. So I, I originally started off building web apps uh, with React Firebase, uh, got into the analytics space, decided at some point that I wanted to be able to create a new product. And so um, one of my business colleagues reached out to me and said, hey, I'm looking to try and satisfy this idea. Are you interested? I said, yes, absolutely. And also it'd be great to uh, uh, welcome some other entrepreneurial minded developers onto the team. And so alas, uh, here I am today. Um, so that is what I have in terms of a little bit more about me and uh, kind of what we're building. Um, I will go ahead and place a link to our um, uh, current website right now, and then I will transition to questions if anybody has some.
Perfect. Um, so one of the questions that I do have for you, so I know we had talked a little bit about you guys wanting to build out your team. Um, tell me a little bit about your ISIS company culture. What do you guys look for when it comes to that sort of thing? And what kind of uh, roles are you guys uh, looking into? Oh, I think you might still be on mute. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So our two kind of two main pillars for our team, which uh, is, is a group of people who have been around technology for a couple of years, um, is creativity um, and, and also uh, uh, the networking piece of the platform. So we believe in empowering founders who will then become multi time founders for different projects where uh, a creative individual comes in with a certain idea, they're looking to get um, their idea funded from a variety of, of capital sources that our, our software will enable and be able to uh, know that there's a network of other founders who have access to other capital types uh, to be able to help out. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and again, so if you guys have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat function um, while Thomas goes ahead and puts his uh, link in the, the chat function as well for you guys. You go ahead and do that. I won't interrupt you while you do that. Um, one of the things that I think is interesting with uh, Thomas's company here is uh, it's very much looking for those that are entrepreneurs, those who are um, creative and go-getters. And I think that definitely mirrors the um, attributes that we have here at Bottega University, which is um, taking a hold of your own future and wanting to build out your own dreams. So um, I definitely really like how they, they kind of overlap on that sort of thing. Um, Thomas, you did talk a little bit about the stack that you guys are using. Can you dive a little bit more deeper into um, when you're looking through uh, potential hires, what kind of projects are you looking for? What kind of resume qualifications are you looking for? Um, tell us a little bit about what makes your dream um, a candidate basically. Yeah, absolutely. So in, in terms of um, types of React projects that uh, maybe you have seen or, or you have an interest in, uh, the platform that is being built really acts as a, a transaction uh, machine. And so um, if uh, any of you have an interest in that area or you come from uh, experience working around banking or um, around investing or, or uh, maybe even e-commerce is a great other alternative where uh, there are uh, transactions that are a part of both the uh, interface but then also too as well with the um, the the database design and schema as well um, generally with different applications, as, as probably everyone on the call knows, uh, there are so many ways to structure data. Uh, data can be um, placed into blob storage for images or for uh, more file-based um, applications like Instagram. And then on the other side of the spectrum, there is more sort of um, a, a blend where there's maybe textual data, there's image data, um, for, for storage, that might be something like a platform uh, like medium.com where our um, articles are, are being generated off of templates. Um, and so, but, but there's no really transaction piece that's a part of that. So if you have uh, either or uh, exposure to transactions or exposure to React, then that is something to uh, be excited, excited to hear more about that experience that you've had and then also enable you to be able to explore it more. Uh, in terms of back end, so uh, we uh, do have uh, an organization set up within um, AWS. And so I come from a, a primarily a Google Cloud platform. 
background. So spent a lot of time deploying uh, infrastructure for corporate projects uh, using Terraform, Jenkins uh, for CI CD pipelines. And um, our, our DevOps setup is more focused with um, AWS uh, code deploy um, and, and just using some of those in-house tools that AWS has. Perfect, perfect. And then if you guys have any questions or if you are wanting to maybe uh, get in contact and kind of wanting to network for this. Um, a good contact is actually Career Services. Um, career Services, sorry, Career Services at Bottega.edu. Um, Thomas, do you want them to reach out to you directly or just have them go straight through the Career Services team? What, what would you prefer? Uh, yeah, please reach out to me. Um, feel free to attach um, uh, your resume and I can go ahead and spin up a Google Meet conversation uh even this week so if that's something that they're really looking forward to getting started as um, soon as possible or you want to learn um, as soon as possible i'm happy to connect and uh, uh, kind of bring you in more to what we envision for the future perfect perfect and then for those of you who are um wanting to get more information. So the link is right there in the description. It's uh, capital.co, uh, C-A-P-T-A-L dot C-O. So go ahead and go there and kind of look up a little more about what they do, um, all that good stuff. And I wanna thank you, Thomas, so much for coming, talking a little bit about your company, um, helping us kind of get an idea of what you do. Uh, a lot of software engineering isn't just about coding, it's about being part of a culture, being part of what the company's goals and aspirations are. And uh, with you guys, it has been, and amazing to kind of see how you guys develop, how you guys work, and just kind of seeing how similar it is to the, the environment and culture that we have here as well. So it's been kind of nice getting to know you guys' company more and getting to know you as well. So it's been awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And it'll be it'll be an iterative process. So even after the MVP is developed, um, please do stay in touch. We we um, know that there'll be probably several hundred uh, people coming on and posting projects and several hundred um, investors. And so it's a great pool of feedback for a product development team and engineers to be able to see what the user base is looking for and what could be the next thing specifically within the area of uh, venture funding. So, um, uh, Yep, please do reach out and I look forward to connecting. Perfect, perfect. Um, awesome, everyone. So to close things off, um, we're going to now go into more of a um, a workshop uh, type thing for here. Um, I'm going to be talking guys a little bit about post-graduation for those that have already been graduated but still wanting to build out their uh, portfolio a little bit more. And we're gonna talk about some of the tips and stuff on how to keep building, how to keep growing and, and what are some good practices to kind of keep on track. Um, let's go ahead and thank uh, Thomas Smith and let's thank uh, Danny Carmen for coming and talking with us. And then let's go ahead and jump in. And if you guys wanna do the, the clap emoji or put in things, go right ahead. Um, but uh, we're now going to move into the uh, workshop portion of today's event. Awesome. Okay, so as many of you guys are working towards uh, post-graduation or those that have already graduated and you guys are working on building out your portfolio, uh, one of the things that we get a lot here is um, I'm graduated now what? What do I do? How do I keep going? Um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, some resume structuring. We're going to talk a little bit about some tools that we have here at Bottega that you can use to help keep track of um, your applications, your growth, how to grow a little bit. So let's kind of jump into a little bit of that. So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about um, the importance of resume, what to include on it, how to build stuff out and things like that. One of the main things that I uh, see a lot with uh, junior and also resumes that are career changing resumes. Um, these are resumes where you are moving from one industry to another is you will find a lot of gaps in your resume. 
Um, with that, uh, one of the things that I like to talk to my students about is um, while you're in the program, while you're graduated, start to think about projects that you can do, um, either freelance projects, either passion projects that you have that you want to build out and start building these projects out um, to add into your, your portfolio, but also to add into your resume as well. Um, kind of like what uh, we were talking about earlier uh, with uh with Danny and also, you know, you know, Thomas had also talked about e-commerce sites. These are really good sites to get you guys experience. Give me one second. These are really good uh, topics to get you guys experience, but it also is really good on your portfolio. Um, there is a, a idea that when you build out your resume, your resume is just done and it's not, it's never done. It's always going to be building. It's always going to be getting bigger and better. Um, so I don't want you to think of your resume as uh, a completely finished project. It will never be completely finished because you're always going to be adding more stuff into it. Um, you want to get into the habit of as you complete projects, as you start to finish freelance work, as you start to do more professional work, always keep your resume up to date. It is always good to have an up-to-date resume, even if you're currently working, because you will be surprised how much of what you're doing can be uh, added in, transferred over, all that good stuff. And it's just always good practice to have an up-to-date resume. So that's tip number one. Um, another thing that I get often is, um, how do I keep track of how I'm doing with the career search? One of the tools that we have here at Bottega University is called Career Score. Um, with a show of hands, how many of you guys have heard of Career Score? How many of you guys have an account through us? I'm just curious to see how many of you guys actually have one. Um, put in the chat function or you know, however you want to uh, indicate that you have it. Um, so Career Score is a um, it is a career searching application that allows you to keep track of when you apply to uh, job job openings. Um, it allows you to keep track of things like who am I working with, who am I networking with, things like that. Um, and so it kind of takes the guesswork out of a lot of, uh, you know, what am I doing to get to where I want to get to? Okay, so it looks like, okay, someone says they don't have it. That is totally fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link here in the chat function for all of those that are too scared to say they don't have one. I know you're out there. It's okay. <laughs> Here's the link. Um, so it is a free program through uh, Bottega University. Um, and basically, OK, so now we have people speaking up that they don't have it. You're only doing it now that I called you out on it. <laughs> Perfect, OK. Uh, so yeah, there's the link there. It's a free application through us. And the way it works is as you are working with the program, it will have you download an extension. Um, once you start an account, it will notify me. I am able to then send you guys the extension to download or you go to the help section, it'll just have you download it. But basically the way it works is when you're going places like LinkedIn, Indeed, Glassdoor, it'll pop up on the bottom right and say, do you wanna save this application in your account? And you can then save, okay, I applied to it, saved, and it'll save it into your account. The benefit of this is couple of things. One, it allows you to keep track of your follow-up. So you apply to a position and you have a contact there. And then you're like, you know what? I want to make myself a reminder to keep in touch with that person. You can save their contacts and keep in contact with them throughout your, your career, throughout your job building. So what's really nice is um, one, it allows you to keep track of that stuff. Two is I have access to it as well, where I can see what you're doing. Um, here at Career Services, a lot of my job is trying to figure out how to support you guys the best way that I can. So I may see that, okay, it looks like Sean is applying to um, Amazon uh, for their QA position. I actually may have a contact there and I can help advocate for you, or I can help see what we can do to build a connection for you. Um, I may also uh, see, okay, it looks like he, he's got an interview with this company here. Um, maybe I should reach out and see if we need to do a mock technical interview together to kind of get you a little bit more fluid and be able to be able to go to that technical interview and not feel nervous. Um, so the tool is specifically designed to allow us both to kind of help each other out, get you to where you want to go. But it also allows us to um, check and see how you're doing. Um, you're going to notice when you're working with the program that there are several categories that you may be able to log a, a 
an application under. Um, and you may see that uh, you are getting tons of applications, you're applying, but you're not getting anyone to reply back. That lets us know, okay, maybe we should work on your resume. Maybe we should put more into your resume, get it a little more beefed up, get it a little, you know, more projects, all that good stuff. Um, or I may see that, you know, you're getting tons of applications. You've gotten a couple of, of soft skills interviews and it didn't get any further. And that may help us figure out, okay, maybe we should talk a little bit about what you're applying to, maybe do some mock soft skills interviews. So it's just a, an application that allows us all to kind of work together, help me see what you're doing. The other thing that is nice about it, so post-graduation, um, you guys are going to be out on the hunt trying to find a, uh, a job. Um, we are doing everything with you guys during the program to help you with getting your resume, doing soft skills interviews, technical interviews, your LinkedIn, how to network, all that good stuff. Post-graduation, we do the exact same thing. We're still going to be working with you, sending you guys um you know, available job postings, but then we also uh, network uh, as well. So we, we have companies that come to us and say, hey, we're looking for X, Y, and Z. It allows us to then kind of uh, work with companies and advocate for our alumni and our students. One of the things that we do is we require that all of our students are doing at least 10 applications every single week. And the reason why is that tells me you're actively actually seeking to get placed. You're still wanting to. Um, that also helps me kind of figure out where you're applying, helps me figure out what kind of positions you're wanting. So for instance, if I notice that you're only applying to QA positions, or if I notice you're only applying to part-time or full-time, this kind of also helps me figure out what you're looking for. Um, and when I'm doing my networking, I can help you out. You can, uh, you know, give me some more information on that. So that is one requirement. So if you are wanting help with networking, if you're wanting to help with career services, that is one requirement is you have to have a career score account and you need to be doing 10 applications um, a, a week. Um, one of the other things that is nice about it is it has a place where um, you can uh, add information for each um, for each application that you're putting in, things like who's my contact information, who uh, am I talking with? Uh, this also helps me. So if I ever want to do a recommendation, so if I wanted to, you know, if you're like, hey, can you, you work with this person and send a recommendation letter or talk to them and see what they're looking for? It helps me figure out, okay, I can help you, you can help me, all that good stuff. Um, so the link is in the uh, chat function there. You guys go ahead and save it if you want or go ahead and start uh, loading that up if you want. It is a free application. Um, if you guys have any questions on how to set it up, how to work with it, uh, do not hesitate to reach out to me, uh, career services at bottega.edu. And actually, let me put this, let me put in the email right here for you guys in case you don't have it saved, which you all should have it saved. <laughs> Give me one second here. There you guys go. Perfect. So if you guys go ahead and download it and you get to a point you're like, I don't really know what to do next. I need help. Uh, reach out to me at Career Services. We will be doing uh, you know, webinars every now and then on how to set up the account. So if you get stuck or how to effectively use it. Um, I also do one-on-one. -on -one. So if, if you guys want to meet with me and talk about um, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want to do. This is how I plan to get it. Let's, you know, what should we work on? All that good stuff it's all going to be able to uh, reach out to us through that link and be able to connect um, the last thing that i want to talk to you guys about uh, is we talked about resumes we talked about uh career score we talked about you know what does it take to start getting stuff going the last thing i want to talk to you guys about is uh projects so we talk a lot about um and I, I think I try talked. I had talked a little bit about this with uh, Danny as well. But um, when you guys are choosing out your capstone, when you're choosing out your projects, uh, there is uh, this um, block sometimes of how do we decide what we want to build? How do how do I decide what I want to do? There are no wrong answers when it comes to creating a project for yourself. Um, but one of the things that I want you guys to focus on is as you start to get through the program, as you start to get comfortable with what you're doing. I want you to take a minute and start to think about the things that you do well, make a category, and the things you don't do well or you want to do better. And when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about things like technology, I'm talking about uh, languages, um, it could even be uh, a feature that you want to do better. And I want you to make a list and then I want you to take your things that you don't do well and the things that you wish you could do better, 
And I want you to build a project around that. And the reason why is when it comes to software development, you will never be done. You're always going to be learning. You're always going to be getting better. And it, it's better to kind of take what you don't do well and make it a pet project to do something fun to make it better. So for instance, um, let's say, you know, you get to the program and you realize, you know what, I feel like I'm not so good at, uh, maybe it's databases, you know, you're doing great at everything else, but databases is just something that you're not very comfortable with. Well, Databases are a really good skill. And if it's something that you're wanting to do professionally, you should definitely learn to get better at it. Um, some tips on that is doing things like I've had one student do, uh, uh, he did an inventory of his food storage and created an application that would automatically generate a random recipe every single day using what was in his database. Um, this is a skill that he wanted to get better at and it also had a need. And so he kind of fulfilled uh, both of that, uh, you know, fulfilling both uh, two with one parts kind of a thing. Another thing that you might notice is as you're applying to jobs, you may notice there is a lot of demand for this language or that language. And I've always kind of wanted to learn it, but I've never really gotten into it. You should just decide to do a project with it. And while you've got the time while you're in school or while you're working uh, kind of towards building out your portfolio, take the time to develop those skills. If there's something that you, you really wanna do and you're, you're not sure how to approach it, just get started, figure out what you want to do, and then you can slowly start breaking down the entire project on it on each aspect. Um, I think one of the most exciting things about our career and our industry here is um, you're going to have your entire career to build out pet projects, but you're going to find that as you start working, your free time to build goes down and you're building more of things that other people want to build. Um, or you may find that, you know, you don't get to spend as much time in your pet projects as you want. Now is an amazing time to do that. Now is a great time to kind of decide, okay, there's something that I've always wanted to build. I've got the time. I've got the, the skills. You've got, you know, you've got the Bottega support team. So if you've ever got questions, the projects, we're here to help. Um, you've got all of this stuff already there. Why not just decide to go and bite the bullet build it out. So it's definitely a good project to kind of go in and do. And I know I've got, a, I see a couple of our instructors are here as well. Um, they're a big proponent of this as well. Post-graduation is a big time for building out, for um, finding uh, projects, pet projects to build out, finding new languages. Um, I've heard a few of the instructors talk about the 100 days of coding. That is an amazing uh, uh, challenge to take. It's a, a challenge to do this uh, it's a coding aspect every single day for 100 days, um, and it is designed to really fulfill out your, your technical skills, to really help push you to a limit and to get you into the mindset of a software engineer of, I'm going to be coding every single day, I'm going to be building out something new every single day, and kind of feel that excitement of, okay, I know what I have to do and I want to do it. Um, and ag again, so if uh, instructors, if you want to jump on, uh, feel free to kind of talk a little bit about that. Um, but yeah, I, I am a, a big proponent of, of all that good stuff of um, developing out your skills while you have the time because you're going to have your entire career to keep building out, but maybe not your pet project. So now is a great time to do that. Any questions uh, for me on the career uh, services, the career score that I put in the link or even projects? I, I love to see what people's ideas are for projects. Put in the chat function some projects that you guys are wanting to build out because you will be surprised what your ideas can strike in other people. Um, and I think it's interesting too. I, I love seeing capstone projects because um, it's almost like those mini challenges of you've got this time frame, you've got these parameters, you have to build something out, and every single project is different. They're all the exact same parameters. We give you all the, you know, the same guide, but it's definitely something where I see a new thing every single time and it shows people's personalities. It shows what they're good at. Um, one project may be very straightforward. It may be an inventory pro you know, project. Another may be about a K-pop group. Like it's amazing what we get to see here and everyone's creativity. Um, let's see, I've got one from Gary Duncan. He says, uh, Defy app that allows you to buy stock with, with uh, cryptocurrency. That's a big one right now. A lot of people are building out applications for that just because of how um, 
just knew that all is. I, I definitely love it when people can kind of jump on a, a definitely hot topics out there. Um, okay, I want to work. Oh, sorry. This is from Amber Lynn. And she says, I want to work on a organization application that allows you to organize your life, your financing uh, to daily tasks. Okay, you stole that from me because that's another wish on my list as well. I love I'm the the to do list girl. I put everything in a to do list. I like organizing it out by priority. And even like my financing is the exact same way. So I love that application idea, um, especially because I have a million things I have to do. I have a million things on my mind and I'm always like, okay, let me just write it all down and I'll just start check marking and I get so, like such a rush when I get to check mark it off. Awesome. Yeah, she says same here with the with the, the list queen. I love it. But yeah, so you'll you'll be surprised. I mean, when it comes to project ideas, coming up with it is the hardest part. And then from there, as you start to realize this is what I want to build, you then talk about, okay, this is what I want it to do. This is how I want to structure it. Then you go into the, the nitty gritty of structuring it out, start coding it. But it's it's funny how that first just finding the project idea is the hardest part. But as soon as you get it, boom, everything starts to fall into place. You've got a roadmap and you can start building it out. Um, okay, so I've got another one here. Uh, let's see, recipe app that connects to API of grocery stores to help you locate your ingredients. Websites like HelloFresh that gives you the recipes on your food are, are still uh, sending you old food. <laughs> I love that. No, uh, that is actually an interesting idea of you know using a, uh, you know, APIs using a grocery store that already, you know, has it and then just being able to use what's local to you and still be able to have that creativity of having recipes that are new and interesting and stretch you out to uh, try something new. I love that so much. Uh, yeah, Gary says solid idea. That's a solid idea. I like that a lot. Um, what's interesting too with something like that is you could definitely take it to a very simplistic version of just one API figuring it out. And then as you wanted to grow uh, out and get it more beefed out, you could have it where you could add more stuff like vegan only recipes. You could have it be where it's um, specifically designed to maybe a keto diet. It could even be something like um, you may have a local grocery store at your, your, you know, near you that has an online uh, store that would want to go through you. So when we think about projects, um, always think of there's going to be a version one, and that's just to get it code it out, get it done, get it out there, make it look good. And then don't ever feel like it's done. You can always go back and build on to it or even build another project using that as an idea. So I love that a lot. That is a really solid idea. Um, I think one of the things too that is interesting that, that I really like about projects is um, there are definitely some great areas for, for me and for even for a lot of students that go through it because we all have things that we're good at and we all have things that we're not so good at. So some of the languages that, um, that I've seen that a lot of people want to build out for is React. React's a really good one. If you want to build one out, the very first one that's your really big, full, filled out one, use React. That's a really good one to get really more familiar with. Another one uh, that I see a lot would be um, if you are wanting to do maybe React Native. We do have a React Native course as well here at Bottega University. I do sometimes see students want to go and do that as well. And the reason why is because uh, React Native is a, um, uh, it's a derivative that allows you to build uh, a phone application on both Android and Apple. Um, it allows you to build them both out simultaneously using one code. So it's kind of nice if you've got app ideas for phones, um, React Native is a really good one to get started into. And if you've already got React under your belt, React Native is just a hop, skip. It's, it's syntax error or syntax uh, differences of adding on top of your knowledge you already have. So uh, another really good one. So if that's something you're interested in. Um, okay, I've got another one here. I want to build an application that will organize, track, and develop exercise plans. That's a really good one. Um, it's interesting too, because you could add on to that project with having a, having a component for your, your users to log in, maybe saying something to the extent of, I want to work out this aspect, or I want to do, this is my, my goal. And, and having it be where they might even have a plan of, okay, these are some ideas for you to do, you know, like so if they're like, I want to work on maybe doing more of a uh, core strengthening. Okay, well, here's some, some uh, exercises for that. Here are some uh, uh, things that you could do for that. That's, that's a really good idea. I like that one a lot. 
Awesome. Awesome. Any more guys, you feel free to put them in there. Um, also, I, I wanted to put this in here. I just popped into my mind as you're building out projects. Um, look around in this chat function. We are all in this together. We are all part of the same team. So if you ever have um, like a, a application that you're building out and you're like, I would love another set of eyes to help me look at this, figure out what I want to do with this, feel free to, to use your fellow uh, coders here and uh, let, you know, send your, your guys' uh, profile links, your project links out. Um, more eyes on a project is always good because someone might catch something that you may not, um, whether that is syntax errors, whether that's coding, uh, you know, you someone might, might say, oh, maybe it'd be better for the user interface to do this, or, or even if it's, hey, I like this idea, I've got another idea to put on top of it and kind of help you build out for that. Um, it's interesting when we talk about um, getting new ideas, you would think that once one idea would would then incite another idea and that would just be two ideas. But in actuality, an idea could sprout multiple ideas from multiple different angles and may inspire a lot more. So it's not really a one plus one equals two, it's more of a one plus, you know, one equals multiple. So it's interesting how, you know, sometimes we'll see someone will have an idea of like, I wanna do maybe this component and it may incite an idea of another person to do two different kinds of apps. You know what I mean? And it's all from the idea of one person. Um, so definitely uh, brainstorm with your fellow coders here. Um, we are definitely here to network. We're definitely here to help strengthen each other. So um, feel free if you guys want to put in your guys' LinkedIn, uh, you know, uh, LinkedIn uh, URLs in there, go right ahead. If you guys have applications you want to get feedback on, put them in the, the chat function. Um, but definitely uh, be proud of what you guys are doing. Building out applications, it's a very brave, uh, it's a very brave thing to do. You've, you've decided to build something from nothing. Um, and I want you guys to be really proud of that. I want you to share. I want you to guys to uh, share it with your fellow coders, but also share it with your family because you'd be surprised, you know, uh, people want to see what you're, what you're building. They want to know what you're doing. Um, okay. I've got one more. I want to build out an application that will predict outcomes for sporting, for sports betting. I'm not sure how that would work. I'm intrigued. I want to know how that would work, actually, because I have a feeling the betting aspect will be very lucrative, but I'm curious to see how that would work. Um, I'm wondering if you're wanting to do it more for like March Madness or if this is just all teams in general or if it's specifically just to, to host stats. Um, there's a lot of aspects there that might be really cool. I like I like where you're going with that. Definitely a good one. Awesome. Awesome. And that was an idea from Dylan. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you for kind of jumping on um, and uh, meeting both of our lovely spotlights coming and doing the workshop with me. Um, I know uh, that it is a uh, Wednesday night. You guys are very busy and I appreciate you taking the time to spend with us to network, to talk with each other, getting, it, getting inspired. Um, a lot of what we do here is just being inspired and building out. And, and I'm so excited that you guys are all here to kind of spend the time with me and to connect. Um, if you guys ever have any questions, if you guys have ever needed any help, um, please reach out. We are here to help. Uh, my job here is to educate, it's to inspire, it's to uh, work with you guys to help you get to all of your guys' goals, whether that is, you know, post-graduation, whether that is job two, job three, whether it's just coming back and being a, a mentor for, for fellow uh, junior developers. Um, we welcome all and we are so happy to have you guys here with us. Um, we're going to end just a little bit early today, uh, just a couple of minutes. Um, feel free to sh save the links in the chat function. They will go away once we're done, but the recording for this event will be available on the website. Um, and then that way, if you guys need to get a copy, you will be able to see it there and on YouTube. YouTube as well. Thank you all so much for coming. You guys have a wonderful evening and be safe.